How's it going guys? So we're going to be talking about this uh, device here that I use to make, or that I'm using to make snake work. And I had to rework this, so that's why I'm making a video on this, because I configured, I figured I could show you how it works, and uh, then show you how uh, the preset will work on the whole thing. So this here is the snake buffer, as you can see here's a buffer with a variable head, so basically you can take data in and place it anywhere in the front and you can change where it's placing it along there and then from there the data will just keep flowing out the back. Um, so the idea here is you can t specify down here how big the snake is, so let's say um, ideally, or when the game starts the snake is going to be size uh, 3, it'll never be uh, 1, 2, or 0. Um, so when you initialize a game we have to fill it uh, we have to initialize it and get the snake filled, so that there it's th so that this counter or this thing is at three. So the way that's going to work is there's going to be a food counter that tells us how many food we've eaten, and it's going to just uh, start at one, uh, zero. We have to increment it to one. When we increment it to one here, um, address one here, we want a zero. Then, so then we uh, would clock it over here. And since there's a zero in there, and now we just updated it, there's still a zero. Okay. So they can cool. Then in address two, we'd want a one. Like this. And then you can see that that data is coming in here, and the way it works is a uh, basically like uh, let's say. Uh, I'll show you just an example for now. So let's let nine come through instead of just one. Oh, shoot, I can't fit through there. Okay, we'll do it like that. Okay, so now nine is able to come through these comparator because both sides of it are off like that. So it's only letting data come through this one. And it comes through, comes through there, comes through there, and comes into here. So now when this cell gets clocked and only this cell gets clocked, that's when that's when that data will come into here and the same thing will happen with this data moving into here but we don't want it to be 9 we want it to be 1 I was just doing that for demonstration so now you'll see that when I clock this here we got the data in here and I think I can shorten this clock like that No, I'm going to keep it like that, though, just because it's working. Anyway, so now we have a 0 here, a 1 here, and now I want a 2 up here. So basically, every time you'd, uh, you'd do this, you'd increment the counter, and then that would just give you the next slot where you're going to be putting the head. This is basically where the head goes. It's telling you how large the snake is. So if the snake is 3 large, the head keeps going in on the third spot while the tail keeps popping out the back. And you keep putting in a new head in the front as you move. And the new head, this is either just the x or the y axis. So this is just keeping track of one variable. And that's why I have two. Um, so yeah, now we'll put in address 3. We're going to put a 2 in address 3. Like this. So now you'll see a 2 is coming out here. And it'll come into this cell. So you clock it, it comes into that cell, and this one didn't move. So now we have 0, 1, 2. And on the other side, I want all zeros loaded in. And then what'll that, that will, what that will do is on the screen, which is this massive thing here, a punch a hole in. Okay, so here's the screen, and then here's the snake, and then that'll be the tail, and then uh, this will be the head. It just freeze. Like just pretend. Like, well, it, well, that is how it's going to be laid out. But like I'm designating them with these uh, blocks, right? So, with the head being like this, I uh, this is what's going to be in the queue. So on the y-axis, it's going to be zero because if you look at my decoder up here, this is address zero, and this is one, two, three, four, five. So I address zero at the top, and then fifteen at the bottom. And the reason I did that is because I can easily just cut off the top like this and automatically like just get these three cells to fill true. So that like 
the, lo the when you load in a game, it just feels smooth and instant. You don't have to go through the cycles of actually loading and everything. You, like one at a time, everything will just load in at once. Um, so because of that, um, this is what's going to happen. And then, so I needed a zero in all three positions deep in the y axis, but in the x axis, I need to fill a one, two, and a three. Well, actually, this is a zero, one, two. Because this is address zero zero, this is zero one. Am I saying that right? No. This, if this is the x, it would be uh, zero zero one zero two zero. So that's why the y all needs to be zeros and the x needs to go zero one two like that. And as you increment the x over, so what's going to happen is the tail will pop out and then you imprint. Like let's say we move right, so this will be a three instead of a two in the head. But then we'll have a three, two, one, and then the tail pops out, and you put a head over here, and it'll be four, three, two. So let's let me show you that in this action here. So now we keep it saying that the snake is three long, like it hasn't eaten any food yet. It's still three long. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna say we're done loading in things. So we're gonna flip that on, or we're done loading, like preloading it. Like now we want it to function as like one whole unit now. And we're going to say, okay, now um, we move to the right. So now we're going to say we're putting in a three here. So it would be, all right, I could just do this actually. So we're putting in a three in position three. And what's going to happen is three is going to come in here, two is going to come in here, and one is going to come in here when I clap this button. Or press that button. So now let me remove the input so you can see it. And now we have three, two, one just like I was telling you. So that's how the snake is going to move. And so now this is telling you where the tail is now. So when you have to toggle the tail, you just go to this position in the x axis, and then zero, zero in the y axis, and then toggle that on the screen. So sometimes you're going to be reading the tail off, and then sometimes you're going to be reading where the head is. So you either toggle the head or toggle the tail. And that's the two things that you need. And the head is generated based on the user if they're going left or right and then the clock updating the program counter to increment x or increment y or decrement x or decrement y. So that's why there's two program counters over there in uh, one red and one blue. Um, there's actually four of them but uh, they, they share the same output so it's like really having one it's just I couldn't bust wires to each other over there but I'll explain that later. Um, but this is just it's like three two one now in the buffer so let's say we kept moving in that same direction so then we'd have a four you know, so now when I press the button, it's going to go four, three, two. So I press the button. It says uh, up here. Yeah, there move. Now it says four, three, two, like that, and that's moving. Now let's say I eat something. So that means my head stays where it is. My tail doesn't pop, but my head actually increments and plots the next one over. So it sounds weird. So like basically what would happen now is you don't pop the tail like this, and you just write a five into this cell here. So you'd increment this to four like this, and then you would write a five here like this because that's what the program counter would say on the output and that's going into there as data. And then now what's going to happen is a five is only going to affect the cell. And that's essentially you eating. You just toggle the head where uh, it's true. Where this, where if the, the head is colliding with the uh, food, you just you keep it and you don't toggle the tail off. So then we have a five, four, three, two. So now the snake is four long instead of three. And so what I can do is leave it at four long, and now I can put in a six, like this. Make it the whole thing move as a unit. And then if I remove the six as an input, so it's just easy to see without any clutter. Now we have six, five, four, three. So that's as if it was moving right, it ran into a food and it grew, and then it kept moving right. So that's just how one of these cells works. And now what you can see up here is now that the snake is four long, 
This one is four long, saying that it's uh, because two of these turn off at a time. If you can see, this is off and this is off because it needs to read these these things, so both of these have to turn off. I needed to prevent both of these from turning on because I didn't want it to think that the snake was any longer than it actually was. So that's what this thing is. It's to wrap around and disable that torch, and they all just disable the one after that. Um, so when it says it's four long, it doesn't think it's five long. And when it says it's five long, it doesn't think it's six long because both, because like I said, both of these have to turn off to read. Um, so yeah, so then what it does is it comes up here and it says, okay, I'm four long here, so make sure this, all four of these uh, are known that they're filled. And we don't want that, to, we want that to be as quick as possible. So yeah, I could have just put a bunch of repeaters between each line and filled them, but that wouldn't be quick. This allows like multi sections of it to be like computed synchronously and then like carry like from the other sections like that. So this is only allowed to move to the left, not move to the right, as you can see. And it's too wide, so this is nice. And then what it does, it says, okay, so these are the cells that are filled. So see if the cells that are filled have any collisions. So it's basically gonna take the cells that are filled and take their outputs and off to the side like this. And it's gonna say, since these cell, four cells are, uh, are filled, check and see if any of these cells collide with the random number that we're generating for this axis. So since this is the x, see if the x axis random number that we're generating collides. And if it collides, throw out a flag. So basically what it'll do is if it throws out a flag, this will become true here. And it'll say since I'm searching for in these four cells here and it's true, then like, hey, there's an issue. Or no, so all, sorry, all these are all inverted from the logic. So like, oops. So just pretend these are all inverted like that because they come from logic that's inverted. Then when there's a when there's a difference in the cell, it'll say, okay, there's a collision here, generate a new number. Um, and then when there's not a collision anymore, it'll turn off. So I'll keep picking a new number until it's good. Um, so that's how you check the random numbers to see if they're gonna, cause you don't wanna, you don't wanna put a food where the snake already is. Cause if you did that, then it would it just bug the game out. I, I wouldn't even know what would happen. Like you would, the snake would just, it would turn off a pixel in the snake. Um, so we, d we want to prevent that. So now I'll show you the, the bigger version and like why it's designed the way it is. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at this thing, which is the full version, where it's mirrored now on both sides. So this is the compare cell, which then throws out, that's it, it's inverted like I was telling you, it, and it comes out up here, and then this is how it'll throw the flag, like I was explaining over there. And it's checking it off the random number that's generated here. So you can see it's only one random number generator that comes in and then is fed across all cells. And if that's, uh, so the reason there's a bunch of different random number generators is because you can basically do a pseudo random number, which is you, you don't, you update this once and then you don't change the values in it and you just read a different cell one at a time. So this way you, uh, you can go back and see where it was supposed to generate a number and if it did or didn't, you know, you can try to debug this a little easier. But yeah, I guess in theory you only need one and then you can update it. But um, yeah, this works also, like this is just a cool way, plus like it fills the whole length of it anyway, instead of just having like one, you know, so they could give some functionality. Um, so then I was saying how I have four program counters, but they really are only two. Well, you see here, here's a blue one and then here's a blue one. And you can see that the, they, they share the same lines. Like, they share the same lines and they come out over here. And then the red one over here shares the same lines as the other red one. And then comes out over here to be red. And I'm just figuring out where the busting is. I'm not actually putting any repeaters or anything yet. Well, I'm figuring out some of that, of course. Um, so, now I can show you that I can pre with a button here, I can preload a 1 and a 2 into the correct cells where I need them to be. So right now, all I have to do is um, reset this thing here, which is this button. Is that, no, I don't think that's the right button. Maybe it is. I think this is the button. There we go. Huh. Yeah, let's see. 
Oh, I think that I need to put this at one like that. There we go. Alright. So now I think it'll work. So if I press this button. Then this is counting down to one. Comes over here, does the same thing. Where is that? Turns it off. Nice. So let's see. Yep, we have a, a one and a two here. That two and a one. Um, yeah, so I can preload things in and I push up a button, and you can see the reason that's now uh, not this is the right cell now is because I have an extra cell out here. So. Yeah, that's, that's how this works. Um, yeah, I don't want to go into any much any more detail on this really because uh, it's not fully built yet. But I can show you that yeah, there's the food counter that controls this is yeah this orange thing here, and then you have another orange one there, and these two will sync to the same values so that they're loading in the th same things at the same time. Um, and then here is the mux that controls what data is going to the screen. So well, not really what data, but what what pixel is being toggled on the screen? Because like I said, it's a T flip flop screen. So it's got to toggle the tail off and toggle the head on. So because of that, if you use the T flip flop screen, it makes things much easier than like a SR latch screen or like a D flip flop screen. Like this is, uh, allows us to take advantage of that logic in Snake to just toggle the tail and place the head. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys like that insight into how this buffer is going to work and like how it feels and then how it can just remain in length and then keep cycling through values and moving around so you can you can move up down left right yada yada um so yeah i'll see you guys next time